Back at it here on the Red Golden Bold podcast, where tonight, uh, for the first time, we'd like to welcome a brand new sponsor. That's right. Northland Injury Law joins the festivities here on the Red Golden Bowl with Jeff Chidian from the NFL Network, Eric Eager from Sumer Sports. I'm Seren Petro from Sports Radio 810 WHV, Northland Injury Law, Kansas City's Google, five-star rated. Personal injury lawyers helping people with serious injuries from car accidents, work, ac- work accidents, excuse me, easy for me to say, falls and other serious personal injuries. Their attorneys have been serving Kansas City and the Kansas City Metro for more than 40 years. They don't get paid unless you get paid. Uh, so call right now. Uh, if you have been in an accident or know someone who has, 816-400-HURT. That's 816-400-HURT or simply text HURT, H-U-R-T, to 22-222. That's HURT to 22-222. We've got a lot we want to get to today in addition to welcoming our friends at Northland Injury Law. Uh, Rashi Rice now facing uh, millions of dollars in lawsuits, two victims suing him. How much worse does that make the situation with the Chiefs? Does it change his status with the club or the NFL? Both Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid referenced Mar- uh, Marcus uh, Marquise Brown uh, and uh, him being more than just a deep threat. Maybe it should be more than an intermediate threat based upon his yards per catch in his career. But what is the ceiling for Hollywood Brown. How important is the Mahomes passing camp in Texas? We'll get into that. Uh, Andy Reid still seems to think Kadarius Tony has something to offer this team. Why? I'm not sure. But maybe Jeff or Eric can figure that out because I know I can't. Uh, we saw a couple of mock drafts that look like maybe worst case scenarios for the Chiefs. We'll get into what is the worst case scenario for the Chiefs in this draft and a lot, lot more. It's coming up right now on the Red Golden Bowl podcast. You're listening to the Red, Gold, and Bold podcast. The most in-depth analysis of the Kansas City Chiefs on planet Earth. Breaking down the Chiefs like no one else can. Red, Gold, and Bold is hosted by Jeff Chidea, Eric Eager, and Seren Petro. Jeff Chidea is a senior columnist and on-air personality for the NFL Network and NFL.com. Eric Eager is the vice president of research and development for Sumer Sports. Seren Petro was the afternoon drive host of the program on Sports Radio 810 WHB in Kansas City. The Red, Gold, and Bold podcast is proudly brought to you by Gan Asphalt and Concrete, Kansas City's nationally recognized full-service paving and pavement maintenance contractor, making parking lot problems disappear since 1994. Free consultations, no commissions, in-house crews, and every project comes with a written warranty. Find them online at ganasphalt.com or call 816-484-3338. Gan Asphalt and Concrete. One contractor, all things parking lot. Now, here are the hosts of the best Chiefs podcast, Jeff Chadia, Eric Eager, and Soren Petro. Thank you, Curtis. We do appreciate it. Uh, Back at it here on a Tuesday. If you're catching us via the podcast, remember, you can be a part of the conversation. Got people lining up already, making their comments here in the uh, chat room. Be a part of it. Join us as we stream live usually Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Uh, Jeff, let's uh, start right off with the news of the day, and uh, or at least news of the week, I guess I'll say. Uh, Rashi Rice now sued by the individuals. Uh, is this going to make any more of an impact? I mean, I think we probably thought this was coming, but does this make it in any way worse for him with the NFL, with the Chiefs? We picked the right time to get a legal firm a law firm on it <laughs> have them on to join our pockets to talk about how crazy this is about to get for him yeah it is it is worse because what this guarantees is that this story is going to keep having a lot of news cycles moving forward and i think we all knew when this went down given the video given the number of people involved that a civil lawsuit was pretty likely coming out of this i'm sure more will be coming given that there's two other people who are involved in this but yeah it's Look, I think I'm curious to see how Rasheed Rice handles this once he starts talking, starts playing. I know he's working out with Mahomes. Andy was asked about him, Andy Reid, and Mahomes were asked about him. But I think it's just it's just a big mess right now. And I know that he's trying to do the right thing and cooperate, but he's going to lose a lot of money. He's going to lose a lot of playing time. He's going to have to rebuild his reputation. You know, he's facing the the possibility of jail time. I don't know if that will happen, but he's got eight charges he's facing, two that are felonies. So 
I don't know where rock bottom is, but it seems like he's pretty close to it right now when it comes to everything that could happen with this case. You know, Eric, I think that's a great point that Jeff said. It's it's about the – now there's layers. There's more news cycles. It keeps getting put out there again and again and again. Maybe it doesn't add – I mean, certainly he didn't have another car crash, but it means it won't go away. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to hang around. We're not going to forget about it for sure. And um, and the details got worse, obviously. The, the speed with which he was driving was not, you know, becoming and, and all this stuff and – you know, the way that he handled it, obviously, out of the gate was not great. So that, that you know, there, there are going to be, this is going to linger in Rasheed Rice's life and, and by extension, the life of the Chiefs uh, for basically this season, if not, um, if not, you know, for a couple of years now. So it, it's going to be a problem for them. I agree with Jeff, um, which... You know, this is, I don't know if it gets to the situation like we had in 2019 where you have to go into the draft and assume that Tyree Kill is not going to be on this team or there's going to be a likelihood that they're they're going to move, have to move on from him. But uh, I do believe that there is going to be, um, the, I, I do believe that there's going to be a, uh, uh, a change in strategy come next week because of this. Yeah, what would change? Well, I think if they're going to break ties, right? Like this is not a team. The last need the Chiefs draft in the first round was Trent McDuffie. Um, before that, we've seen how they've used the first round pick in 2020. <clears throat> 2020, Clyde Edwards-Alaire was not really a need. Uh, he he was I, a, I muted. I muted you, and then I coughed. So. I was going to say, I bet Eric I like, muted himself. I got that back. So then we're trying to. <laughs> You're playing hurt, uh, and and we respect you for that. Honestly, you. Uh, you know that, that you're you're a, uh, you're a pro's pro. Um, not the, not that time I wasn't. We all look. Pat Pat had a bad Christmas Day game. Let's just you know, Seren has Seren's capable of having one you know one bad click of the mouse. Um, I just think that it's gonna it's gonna tip the scales a little bit. I don't know if that means they're gonna take a wide receiver in round one, nor should they. I think that, um, but it might change their you know whether they do that to go after Tyler Boyd, do they go after um, free agents and you know to try to like fill that particular role? Maybe do they trade? I I uh, did a, a draft mock draft for the Hammer Betting Network, uh, a podcast network that I uh own a, a little bit of equity in, and i was like i'm gonna trade for jahan dotson should they trade for jahan dotson like should they give up a fourth round pick for him should they be going dumpster diving for other teams wide receivers like i, I think that that's a really uh reasonable question should they re-sign marquez valdez scantling should they do like there's a bunch of questions here uh that that you know they post draft even um, do they do with wide receiver what they did with left tackle last year, which is go out and get a veteran after the after the after all seven rounds? I think it's a good question. I mean, I, I, they they certainly sounded on the on, on the press conference the other day like, hey, like can I, we're all here. Rashi Rice will be here. He's on the Zoom. We've talked to him. The one thing that stood out, Jeff, was Andy Reid said, "Well, I want to make sure he's sorry." Right, like, and I don't think you can do that over just a quick phone call. Like, I think you got to get to camp, be around the guy. You know, if, if he's a complete jerk on Zooms, which are what all their meetings are right now, I guess that could show its way there. But for the most part, like, that was the one little thing. Like, that's not really Andy Reid. He's always like us, 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 you, 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 us against the world. And he and he did say, I want to, I want to hear that he's sorry. I th I thought that was a little bit telling. I've kind of felt all along that they would just move beyond this, get to practicing. He'd do what he needed to do legally. They'd take the suspension and he'd be back. But that was just a crack of maybe Rashi Rice could screw this up. Well, yeah, and I think that was important, even though it wasn't a hugely informative press conference by Andy Reid. They had to make some kind of mention to, like, kind of the, the optics of this. I mean, it doesn't look good to just kind of always be saying, Oh, well, the legal process has to play out. You know, we know him. We'll see what happens. You have to acknowledge that this guy did something really stupid, endangered lives. And 
yeah, you're not around him every day. I mean, you're doing Zoom calls with him. I mean, Mahomes is working out with him in Texas, but you're not seeing him right now and how he's handling it. And it, it's one of those things where, again, that video is so damning. It's one thing if that car crash happens and he's getting out of the car with his friends and checking to see if everybody all right here. We're waiting for the cops. You know, what do you need? We'll, you know, we'll call for help. We, I'm sorry in the moment, but he did so many things that I think even as somebody who's around him every day it, it, over the course of the season, like his teammates or his coaches, you know, Brett Veach, they have to wonder like what, what was going through your mind and what was happening there. And, and, and so those questions have to be answered and they're not answered in one conversation that, as you said, they're answered over time. <laughs> it's unfortunately for him, he's got to spend months trying to do a lot of reputation rehab and it'd be hard to trust him right now if I'm Andy Reid. Uh, how about the amount of money? I mean, he doesn't have the amount of money, right? Like that's that's one of the issues there. Like, you know, which I don't know. <laughs> it incentivizes the guy that's to there. do things the right way and get a contract extension. I mean, yeah, career uh, on layaway now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it is like it, it shows this is you know going to cost him millions when it's all said done. The lawyer, the fines, everything that's going to happen. Plus, he is now a player that really needs to rebuild his reputation over the next two years. And it puts the chiefs in a spot. And I asked Andy Reed, you know, Eric, like, Hey, Andy, you know, do you got to change how you prioritize wide receiver? I also mentioned one, you Morris at left tackle. You know, I couldn't miss that opportunity. Uh, he said, yeah, listen, we're, we're definitely <laughs> looking at it, but we're looking at everything at 32. You don't really, you can't call your shot. Is, is it that easy, Eric, that best player available, you lean back on it. Or as you mentioned, do they go for need? They moved up for for need with McDuffie. Worked out pretty good that time. Yeah, I think the McDuffie one was interesting because they didn't feel that they were in that draft. They had picked 28 and 29. I don't think that they felt like there were 28 first round picks. Um, and that, by the way, that's a misevaluation of George Karlaftis because he's been worth a first round pick. Um, but they they felt that McDuffie was kind of like the last player who was worth a blue chip play a pick and so they went up and got him he just happened to be a corner um i think that the edwards alaire pick the anazuke uzama picks were kind of the opposite of that where they weren't able to move up and find a player that they liked and so they took a player that was kind of a luxury now it shows the maturity of their front office where a luxury pick in 2020 is a running back who can run for seven yards of carry per Brett Beach. And now it's a defensive end who is backing up other good defensive ends at a premium position so that they don't have to overspend for Amena who when he comes back after this year and so forth. So um, I think that it increases it certainly. And I think it's going to break its high, but they're very convicted in round one oftentimes. And so I don't think they're going to trade up to break a tie to get a wide receiver. I, uh, maybe Brian Thomas, if he falls, I know Jeff talked about how much he liked him. And I agree with Jeff guy turned 87 targets into 17 touchdowns last year. He's, you know, but like, and wide receivers do fall. We saw the Jerry Judy, CD lamb, Justin Jefferson draft. They all fell into like the late teens, early twenties. So if that happens, maybe, and, and Chiefs fans should be really happy if that happens. I just don't know if, if it's going to be, as clean as okay they're at 32 best player available there's a tie okay they're gonna go lad mcconkey type of thing uh jeff how about hollywood brown uh you heard uh patrick mahomes this week say they think he can be a lot more he's not just a speed receiver which i thought was funny because he, he does clock with speed but his production has been more of a intermediate guy which we've talked about a lot already on this podcast but but what do you take away from the comments of Reed and Mahomes about saying Marquise Brown can be a lot more than that? We heard, I have to send chills down everyone's spines, <laughs> including yeah. Eric Eager. We heard that yeah. same thing yeah. about MVS. We also, I also remember Josh Gordon being, you know, reborn when he got here and then never really doing a whole lot, which I think Marquise Brown is going to be a good, a good fit, you know. But I, I, I was doing radio in Baltimore last week. And uh, a guy I know, Vinny Serrato, who used to work for the 49ers front office. He does, you know, and the and the commanders. I almost said Redskins. And did say Redskins, by the way. Um, but 
we talked about Marquise Brown. He, he got really passionate about it because he was asking me how was he going to work. And I said, uh, they're excited about him. He said, you know, the thing that pissed me off about Marquise Brown when he was with us, with the Ravens, was he always wanted to get down on the ground. Never wanted to take contact. Never wanted to do anything after the catch. If it was even a jet sweep, he would get down as fast as he could. Never wanted contact. I said, well, that's weird <laughs> because that's the, that's the complete opposite of what they want here. And that's the first time I'd heard anybody say that about him. And so that's, you know, and I've always wondered why he wasn't such a hot item in free agency. And I do think he'll fit, but I am a little bit worried about hyperbole here. I, I do think it's going to take him some time to adjust. We've seen that with other receivers in this offense. I think that he brings an element that will be valuable with the deep speed. But again, his numbers and what Vinny said, it does give me a little bit of pause that it's not going to be an immediate you know, success with him stepping on the field in this offense. Eric, best and worst case scenario for Hollywood. Uh, I think Hollywood Brown's worst case scenario is uh, kind of what we saw with MBS. I think the the best case scenario wow. is wow. a <laughs> 1,200 yard receiver with 10 touchdowns. So his upside is much higher than MBS. I think the downside is, you know, a guy who quits and, you know, kind of now MBS didn't quit. He just sucked. But like, you know, he but there are there have been some players like where Mahomes has not clicked with that player like MBS. And it just like Pat just like will look elsewhere. And that could be that could certainly be a situation. Yeah, I think people underestimate to cut you off. They underestimate how much Tyreek Hill, how good he was at adjusting to what Patrick did. They had a great chemistry yeah. and rhythm that is not just immediately duplicated. Well, and and the and the one time we saw, I mean, that was the thing that MBS was so terrible at was when Patrick was moving around in the pocket. We saw it one time against Buffalo in the playoffs where Pat moved around and MBS ad libbed, and it was a big play down the field. And if we probably if we would have saw that, if we would have seen that more from Watson, MBS, some of the lower tier receivers that have been on this team, the Chiefs probably wouldn't have gotten Mark uh, Hollywood Brown uh, this free agency. But those guys were. Uh, those guys were patently uh, unaware, you know, on the intuition on moving around with Patrick Mahomes was non-existent for most of the time, you know, and and it was and, and that was, you know, you think about Patrick and how he's able to 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 create, to your point, uh, the sack rate so low, the, the scramble rate, all that stuff. He needs a wide receiver that's that's willing to sort of think with him, and I, I, that's not Hollywood Brown to me, but. Uh, if he can get open early in the down and 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 that kind of thing, then he's obviously going to be an upgrade over whoever they had last year. Yeah, and, and let, let's be clear. What's wrong one? Uh, this one right here, you know, he's 5'9", 180. Why would you welcome, want him to welcome God? We don't want him to, to, to take on linebackers head on, but you don't want him to, to be touch football, right? And that And that's the knock is that he just goes down. Hey, here comes the contact. You want a guy to try to fight through it. Is he going to be a strong – as Rashi Rice was, who was great at running through arm tackles. No, but you don't want him to just go down without actually being tackled. The run after the catch part is a big part of what the Chiefs do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Demonte Smith is slight. Uh, you know, Tyreek Hill wasn't the biggest guy in the world. Uh, you can go down. Steve Smith, Smith was, yeah. was not a, a big guy. There's plenty of guys out there who are going to play bigger than what they are. And they, they need him. It's not, it's not going to be as simple as, Look, we all believe Rasheed Rice is not going to be there day one. It may not be there until close to midseason, the way this is trending. So he's going to have to be a lot more than just a guy who's just fast. And that is something that being just fast isn't enough for any receiver. You've got to have some other skills, especially playing in this offense with this kind of quarterback. Is there any chance, Eric, in your mind, this ends up being any different than Juju? Is this just – there's no way it can work out but be a one-and-done Probably not. I mean, the numbers are not going to add up, right? Like, if he's good, I, I mean, I guess if he's ho hum, what do you guys think? Is, what do you guys think? I think he's one and done. I, I think I, this is a rental. Yeah, I, I, I think it would it would depend on how the money opened up afterwards. I'm more open to this working than I was Juju, just because I think I don't. I think Juju was, was – I think there was a reason to give him the – he had had a 1,500-yard season on the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
10 touchdowns. Hollywood Brown doesn't have that already on his resume. So if he has a good year, it's going to be largely seen as the product of Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. So I can see, I don't think the price tag for him next time around will be as high, right? You know, and not that Juju broke the bank, but I think he's looking like a, a rent receiver unless he finds a place where he fits. And so I could see a scenario, but most likely, no, I think it's one and done because if he has a good season, he'll think it's time to get paid. He might get paid a little more than the chiefs, but it'll probably be a one and done wherever he goes. Jeff, you think you agree? Yeah, I do. I do. And again, it's look, there's so many receivers coming into the NFL every year and he's an, he's an okay receiver coming to a great offense with a great head coach with a great quarterback. So you assume he's going to do well, but that's not always going to translate everywhere he goes. And really at that position, and, and we talked about Rasheed Rice last week on the podcast about, is he going to be here after his first contract? You start looking at the guys they have to pay down the road and that with Rasheed Rice, not only is it, what's happening with him legally, but he's up at the same time as George Karloftis and Trent McDuffie. You know, uh, if, if you're talking about Marquise Brown, well, they got to pay Nick Bolton. They got to deal with Creed Humphrey. They got other guys they have to pay and they want to keep. That's where the three year, $24 million of Mike Davis starts to kind of turn your head because you're like, okay, if they're paying certain guys backups, that kind of money, then somebody, not everybody can stay. And so I, I look at it very much like they'll find a receiver in this draft. He'll be the guy they keep around for three, four years. And, a guy like Marquise Brown will move on down the road. Don't risk accidents and liability in your parking lot. Get your parking lot restriped today. A brightly striped lot will cut down on accidents and keep your parking lot as safe as possible. Can Asphalt and Concrete is nationally recognized. Full service paving and pavement maintenance contractor. Parking lot problems? There are no problems. They've been making them disappear since 1994. Find them online at ganasphalt.com. Can Asphalt and Concrete. One contractor. All things parking lots. Uh, the passing camp in Texas. Eric Patrick Mahomes is down there. He's holding court. They're, they've got a game plan that he and the coaching staff put together. How important is this? I mean, I think it's it's really important to get uh, to get Patrick on the same page. I think, you know, one of the, in a, you know, this is just my intuition, but like, I think one of the things that has been very apparent the last few years is that Mahomes has not felt comfortable with wide receivers. And I think there's, he, he has been battling. He's been battling. I think that getting, getting a big, a better rapport there is huge for him. And uh, th that will make things a lot easier. Last year was a grind on offense. It'll be a lot less so. Uh, if they can, if they can, if he can get a good rapport with some of his receivers. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Is this window dressing or is there, is this team building? Is this, you know, what makes them so great? What is, is it build Patrick Mahomes as the unquestioned leader and now everybody follows him better because of it? Well, I think there's, there's layers to it, right? I and mean, one is that it does establish that whoever comes here, you're expected to do this kind of extra stuff. And so he's setting the tone with his expectations, not just for the offense, but with the work ethic, with the improvisation. And so it's no different than, I mean, Tom Brady's done it, Peyton Manning did it, everybody, every big time quarterback has done it. I think what's happening now with the way off seasons are in the NFL, and it's a big reason why you asked this question about not, why the Chiefs don't go find a developmental quarterback is that the time you have in the off season with these players is just so minimal. And a lot of these guys don't wanna be up at the facility in the town that they're playing and they want to be somewhere else where they can enjoy life and do the other thing. It, it allows them to have that. So I think it's more of a, of a perk than anything else. It's work is getting done, but it allows Patrick to be in Dallas. It allows the other receivers to do what they want to do in the off season. And it, it creates a certain level of trust and, and, a, and a culture of trust that I think play, plays well when they start getting into training camp and start getting into, you know, the regular season. I mean, one reason Andy can probably have as tough of a camp as he has is because he allows this stuff to happen in April, in early April. I think Tommy Mo though, he says it's hard yeah. to get a good rapport if the wide receiving room is a constant flux. It's like, okay, but Tom Brady won a Super Bowl with Brandon LaFell. He won a Super Bowl with David Patton. They traded Deion Branch from him. They won a Super Bowl with Troy Brown playing corner you know, the, taking time off the wide receiver. They, 2017, they went to the Super Bowl with Edelman on IR. They brought Brandon Cooks in. Like this is, 
if Patrick wants to be the GOAT, right, he's going to be compared to Brady, and Brady always turned – like he always turned over receivers. They had Ocho Cinco there. They had Joey Galloway there. They had Reggie Wayne there for a minute and a half. They right? I mean, this is this is what's going to be expected from Patrick. Yeah. We but, don't, you know. I, I will say that, that those those little Tommy or Terry brings up a good point that I think Patrick as a leader is more of a inclusive, make everybody feel good. Yep. You know, we're all Tom Brady would be like Canaries Tony, get the f out. <laughs> Like he would okay. tell Bill, this guy's out. <laughs> We're not taking him. Get him off the roster. And so maybe that's where the next level is for Patrick is being able to identify these guys early on and say, this dude is, yeah, he's talented, but I, I don't like him. Well, you somebody. remember the that it was a Thursday night game in like 13 when he just like cussed out Aaron Dobson on the side, like in front of everybody, <laughs> right? And like, and that was, the, you know, that was a bad Pats year that I think they only yeah. made it to the AFC Championship game. You know, it's like, you know, and to your point, Jeff, like Mahomes is a very, I mean, Mahomes, but I will say this, and this is for all these clueless people who are talking about, you know, Trey Smith and Creed Humphrey and all this stuff. Orlando Brown was in his wedding and then Orlando Brown's not here anymore. <laughs> like it does happen. Like yeah. Pat's nice to these guys, but he's not, I don't think Pat interferes with the team building. I will give uh Temecula the, uh, the most credit because I think this is which draftees happen to drop by. Like, you know, Rashi Rice was there last year, right? Receivers they, they they were they were trying to get Zay Flowers down there. I can't remember if he went down there or they did. I mean, I think that's like I almost wonder if the whole bring all the guys down here is just cover for you know, so I mean I I said it before. At some point, somebody's gonna be like, wait a minute, we gotta outlaw this. The quarterback of the team that's winning all the championships gets to throw with guys in this draft and kind of give input. Like, if I were another team, I'd be a little nervous about that. Like, I'd, I'd consider it somewhat tampering. And I, I think that's a huge part of the equation. Well, I mean, that's fair. But, I mean, it can, I don't know how you stop it. I mean, down in Florida, if Texas is a place guys want to live because of the state taxes. It's nice down there. Florida is a similar situation. It's... I don't know how you stop it, and I don't know if it's it was that big a deal. Uh, obviously, Rasheed Rice came out of it. Somebody made the comment earlier. I forget who it was, but talked about just like <laughs> Pat also wanted Clyde edwards helaire <laughs> and that blew up. I mean, sometimes you have to like walk that line of we want you to be happy, we want you to like what you're getting here, but you also have to be able to say, look, all right, this dude is like a little bit he can't play, he can't fit, whatever it is. It's a Pat Patron is not a GM. So you don't want to get into a situation where you're, you know, asking him to do all this player evaluation and trying to make him feel happy because he's getting what he wants. Uh, we're proud to welcome our newest sponsor, Northland Injury Law, Kansas City's Google five-star rated personal injury lawyers, helping people with serious injuries, from car accidents, work accidents, falls, other serious personal injuries. Their attorneys have been serving Kansas City for more than 40 years. Uh, they don't get paid unless you get paid. Northland Injury Law voted number one accident lawyer in Kansas City. Don't wait. Get compensated right now. If you have a case, text HURT to 22222 or call 816-400-HURT. That's 816-400-4878. Uh, Andy Reid said today or yesterday, um, Canarius Tony, it's just a matter of the player staying healthy. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, I guess you know, he sure <laughs> I don't have time for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just I'm trying to understand. Is is he is he on a mission to to save Kadarius Tony? I mean, is there what is, what is the deal? I mean, it's part of it. Like he's you know, I mean, seem isn't that he feel that's who this franchise is, right? They brought in DeAndre Baker. They brought in uh, Kelvin Benjamin and tried to wean him. Somehow, funny, Kelvin Be bringing him into the ca the United States capital of barbecue didn't work. Um, <laughs> I forgot you know, about him. Yeah, Kelvin Benjamin didn't work. Uh, Cam Irving didn't work. Uh, Gadarius Tony hasn't worked. Um, Frank Clark really didn't work. Like, I mean, this team... Like, 
it's got to be like Andy's religion or something, right? Like it's got to be like, he's got to <laughs> see this. And I'm not trying to make light of it, but like there are people like that, right? Who like just, they have a heart for those, for, for people who are rough around the edges. And this team has a heart for people who are rough around the edges, man. Like, and I don't know, they, they cannot quit Kadarius Tony. Like Kadarius Tony probably has to run somebody over with his car and run away from the scene before they let him, let him go. Yeah, it's amazing. It's almost like back in the day when 3D movies were were still a big thing. You'd look at the screen without the glasses on and be all blurry. And then you put the glasses on. It's really clear. <laughs> like, And he's got some kind of special glasses that allows him to see Kadarius Tony in a way that other people just don't. You know, I, you know, I don't go, obviously, out to the Chiefs place like everybody else does, like all their beat guys do. But I, at some point, I wish somebody was asking, like, Andy, what is it you see? <laughs> like, what exactly – is it that you say he's talented and all this stuff, and if he stays healthy, it's like, but like the numbers just don't support that. No, they not support it, but he basically said you're lying to the public about this injury. <laughs> Accused you yes. of a pretty serious and that's the other thing. in the NFL. He was, he was a dirtbag during the <laughs> playoffs. Yeah. I, I, I don't know who said we'll make him a star, but they are damned. It's either – yeah. Brett Veach or Andy Reid. They're the only guys that have the power to keep the guy on the team, right? And really, it's ultimately Andy Reid's buying in, even if it's just Brett Veach, who said, he's our guy, he fits everything we do, let's go. It's ultimately Andy Reid. And and look, you, you didn't broom him when he did his little charade, fine. I, I, I'm i not convinced that he's going to make it onto the roster, that he may go to camp and they cut him there, but it is staggered. I think the reason it's a talking point is if they still believe and it doesn't come around, how many guys have they not gone out and gone after in free agency, drafted, on the waiver, whatever, because they kept thinking they could make it work with him? It, it just speaks to a blind spot in their talent game. If, if, if this doesn't come around, what the hell have you been doing for three years? No. Yeah. Well, yeah, but what are they going to – they're not going to spend money on wide receiver anymore, right? So, like, I, 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 I don't know. This wide receiver, but I think if they if they take Justin Jefferson at 24, you know, if they get that kind of talent, they'll spend. Sure, but – but so, okay, what have the Chiefs missed out on because they have continued to take the shot on Tony? I don't know. Like I, mean, I, I just I don't think it's that much. Like they don't have they don't have cash. They've they've um you know I think like they didn't re-sign Orlando because they didn't want to, right? They they didn't they, they've mostly like Kadarius Tony is a, a lo, like he's just another draft pick for them. And I, I I don't think the opportunity cost of keeping him around has been like something great. But they also got lucky last year with Rice developing as fast as if, if, if they were relying solely on him or Sky Moore, like it was pretty bleak. I mean, now you can look back and say it's been great. They won the championship, but it was pretty bleak about midseason. But where is this heading with him having to be a part of the uh, part of the solution? I mean, yeah. Seren wanted the guy tarred and feathered on this show. <laughs> For the vast, like Seren wanted the guy off the road. I don't disagree with. Like, I mean, I, I, at who, how, which wide receiver on the Chiefs other than Rice have we not wanted off this roster at, at points in time, though, is my point. Like, they, their approach to wide receiver has included a bunch of dudes like Tony. Tony just happens to be the guy with the highest draft capital and hence the most frustrating. But this is, this is a, the, the opportunity cost wasn't some other great wide receiver. They're not good. Like, you know what I'm, I, 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 that's my whole thing is, Sure, it was worth the flyer. He made some plays for the Chiefs in the playoffs a few years ago. And now, you know, Andy is just doing what Andy does, which is beer goggles these young players with issues and high draft capital. That's what he does. And, you know, Tommy Moe says, oh, no, Britt Reed. I'm sorry. Is Britt Reed not another – like, this whole thing? I mean, this is a, this is a, a um, permissive environment – to a to a positive for most situations, right? Frank Clark was a good chief. You know, Frank, Chris Jones has been a good chief. Uh, Willie Gay, for the most part, good chief. But like a, a few of them slipped through the cracks. When, who 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 did they say enough? Uh, Kareem Hunt. 
Yes. And why? Uh, well, he, yeah. he lied. Yeah. Right. Everyone's like, well, he kicked going. And really, yeah. like most yeah. people, it's he lied to them. He said, I didn't do it. Then there was video that showed he did, and he was out. How is Kadarius? Th- th- that's my frustration is I-, I understand that. Like, we have a code. Listen, people make mistakes, and there's some mistakes that are too big that will have to cut you. But most of them you can make, and, and we'll bring you in for a hug, and we'll give you a second chance. But if you lie to us, you're out. It seemed clear that was, yes, you can have a personality. You can give this symbol to a ref, and we're not going to cut you. Travis Kelsey, back in the day, you know, you can do a lot of shit and you're still going to be okay here, but there's some things you can't do and you got to go. And I think there has to be a point where this is not tolerated. And it looked like we had that line. How is, how is Kadarius Tony, that Instagram thing, not lying? No. Like somehow that that's, that's what it, to me, it just, they obviously won with him. Right? Can they win with him again? I assume in so. In spite of him, that, that, yeah. that's that's the proper phrasing. Well, they actually won by not playing him. That's the other thing, yeah. which yeah. drives me. And there's a practice I, squad for guys like that. There's other places you could put guys like that. that's the point. I I would make in all this is that at some point you're not going to always get the breaks. You're not going to have everybody stay healthy. You're not going to have the rookie receiver grow up quickly. At some point, like you got to look at you might have injuries. You might not be in a place where you can avoid not having to play him. And if he's on your roster, I don't see where he helps you. I just don't. I mean, it's still pro football. He's got to produce. He hasn't produced. Um, with free consultations, no commissions, and in-house crews, every project coming with a written warning again, asphalt keeps your parking lot safer, helps you and your business avoid unnecessary delays and costly expenses. Find them online right now at ganasphalt.com. Uh, we got a mock draft on ESPN. I bring this up. Uh, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them at NFL.com. We, we talk about a lot of those. Uh, Eric's probably done 50. Uh, yeah. I built the one at PF. I was one of the two people that built it at PFF. Yes, yes. Uh, but the, what I thought was interesting about the Mel Kuyper and uh, Field Yates uh, mock draft was I thought it was doomsday. I thought it was the worst case scenario for the Chiefs if it played out the way they had it. Uh, basically, they had nine offensive tackles, and six wide receivers going in the first 31 picks. 15 of 31. And I think, like, people don't realize when you look at it, it's like, oh, one of those guys will be there for the Chiefs. How how far-fetched is it for Marvin Harrison, Roma Dunze, Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas, Donnie Mitchell, Xavier Worthy, all to be gone? I don't think it's that far-fetched. We Joe Alt- Xavier Worthy is a first-round pick? That's what they're saying? They had him there, but I could easily put Lat McConkey okay, yeah. into that mix, and still it's making it pretty thin. Um, they are Off the offensive tackles. And I'm going to put your names, so just act like you know who I'm talking about. I don't go there for that reason. Uh, Joe Alt, uh, Fashanu from Penn State. Uh, you got Fuaga, Joe Alt right. Okay, Fuaga <laughs> from Oregon State. Uh, Fa'u Tuanu from Washington. Um, Grant Barton from Duke, Tyler Guyton, OU, Amarius Mims, Georgia, J.C. Latham, Alabama, and Jordan Morgan of Arizona. It, it, it puts you down to where, you know, Kingsley uh, Sua Mataya is the top tackle on the board. I bring this up because these scenarios can happen. And if something like that gets going, are the Chiefs going to be forced to trade up? Or is this the scenario that says this is why they'll end up taking a defensive lineman? Because as many as there are, <laughs> they all go early. The yeah, defensive alignment was 16 to 1 in the markets to be the Chiefs' first pick. Third I favorite. Sent, I sent it to all my friends. I said, this is the best bet on the whole board. Yes. And yes. now I think it's favored now, right? No, no, it's, I don't think it's favored. Wideout's still favored. Wideout's, wideout is less than Wide, even money. Wideout O line. But Wideout's favorite line at 16 field. to 1. I think it's 10 to 1 now. It's like one of the it's the best bet on the board still. Yes. And, and so that that's where I'm getting at is if all these wideouts and tackles are going to go, Jeff, like no. this is how you end up taking a defensive line. Yeah, and really there's a lot. I think it's not so much the top of the draft, it's where the teams that are going to be the better teams in the league, the playoff teams are going to be drafting in their needs. Because offensive tackle and receiver are very much in the realm of what the, the Bills need a receiver, the Ravens need a tackle, a Pateka receiver, 
you know, there's other teams I can think of right now. I wouldn't be surprised if Dallas took a receiver. I mean, there's a lot of teams out there that are going to be thinking about, hey, let's cash in here. And then once you get to, I think Brian Thomas is pretty much considered the edge of the top guys, right? So once you get past the top three guys, who Adunze, Neighbors, and Harrison will probably be top 10 picks, then you've got this void here that Brian Thomas falls into. Could very well be a Cincinnati Bengal, for, for that matter, at 18. And so there's a lot of opportunities for some of these really big time receivers to go. And then tackles, yeah. I mean, there's going to be a lot of that run, a lot of run on that as well. And so it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for them to take a defensive tackle, but I think given their needs, what I always say, we always say well, they, they shouldn't take need if it's receiver, but isn't taking tackle a need? <laughs> isn't that filling a need? We 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 dismiss that, but it's a reality that they got to find starting caliber players at those positions. Eric, the math says, you know, trade down. Is, is this one of the rare times you, the mathematician, might actually say trade up? Well, it depends. I mean, what are the Chiefs after in this draft? Are they after more depth or are they after a blue chip player? In 2022, they needed both. And that's why they had 12 picks and they turned a few of them into a blue chip player, McDuffie. And they took the other nine of them and made them into depth. You know, so I think about this team, you have Kelsey Jones, like you, you paid up for Jones, right? He's the Hall of Famer next to Mahomes. You have Kelsey Jones, Mahomes. I think if tackle gets to a certain spot and they like our tackle, I think that's one you could see. I don't think they're going to trade up for a wide receiver. The, I, I think that even though the offense was a mess last year for a lot of the year, I thought that they still believe that on offense, Patrick can cover up first wide receiver, second offensive line, and then third defense. Like when it goes in like the, what can Mahomes overcome to talent deficiencies in? It's very clearly receiver first. They'll slough off on receiver first, O-line second, and defense third, right? And, and where they've invested their money has been defense, O-line, and then wide receivers at the very last, right? That's been the since the Super Bowl in 2020. So I think that it, I would be surprised if they traded up for a wide receiver. I would not be as surprised if they traded up for a tackle. Okay. I, I tend to agree. I think that's a good assessment. But I do see the scenario where Andy Reid likes to draft defensive linemen, yeah. and he ends up doing it. You know, if there's one that they love, uh, and I know you had a couple of draft crushes on the on the D line, Eric. So, you know, we'll see. Yeah, uh, the one but, one rewarded me handsomely, and like two <laughs> days later. But I like the Jerton, Jerry Newton is the guy. Like I, Johnny Newton, sorry, Jerton. Like I think he's one. If he falls, that they might go with him. I think that uh, the Robert, the 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 Mizzou kid that can do inside outside stuff. I think that Darius Dale Robinson. They might yeah. like him. I, I I think that there's opportunity. Now there's not as many of them. When you look at the draft markets, the 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 first round total for offensive linemen is nine and a half. The total for defensive linemen is, I believe, six and a half, and that includes the edges that they're not going to get. Laitu, Latu, Jared Verse, and Dallas Turner. A after that, there's three defensive tackle slash five techs that they might go after. But the fact that there's not as many of them means that they might not and they might not fall to the Chiefs. And then often and then wide receiver, it's uh, expected six and a half. And so, you know, th I think they're more likely to see a wide out or O lineman fall to them. The question is, is they really never drafted O lineman high that fell to them, right? They've almost always been proactive in the O line, either drafting Fisher first or trading for or going at, at free agency for guys like uh you know it's like joe tooney and and who is that mitchell schwartz and then who is the guard from the saints Jar, uh ben grubbs like they went after all those guys in free agency. like i think they're going to be proactive on the o-line in the draft everything else i think they'll let people fall to them uh jeff how important is it to keep patrick mahomes in the loop hey I, I think it's more of a courtesy it's more of a relationship building type thing it's i don't think it's vital i don't it's 
It's like if you're gonna draft a quarterback, you probably want to let him know about it. But I think for the most part, like trust goes both ways. Like I, I think there's enough that's gone on here with the moves they've made in the front office that I think he has great trust in what Brett Feach does and what Andy wants to do. And so I don't think it's one of these things where and he's also not of an age where that stuff really matters. I think he's still very much at a point in his career where he wants to win. He wants to, um, you know, b- keep building his legacy. That, that kind of stuff matters more when guys start getting around, like where Peyton, Peyton Manning was, Aaron Rodgers, where like, what are we doing? I want to get one last shot at this. And so he's got enough rings, enough hardware to where I don't think he's sitting by the phone saying, okay, why would we take this guy? I, I think that he's, it's, it's, it's imp- it's it's not that big a deal. I don't, I don't think they let him make the picks. But I think it's a good thing to let him feel involved. Yeah. And, and let the rest of the team know he's involved because he's the man. And yeah. you always uh, you don't ever want to undercut that. Does that make sense? Eric, you think it's important? Yeah, he's management. Now, I think that the best part about Mahomes is that he's not Kevin Garnett. He's not LeBron. Like, he's not – a basketball player in how he tries to maneuver this roster, right? He's, he's, he has his, probably has his input, but I don't, he, he's a perfect player from that perspective, right? Like, I don't think, so in that case, he's exactly the person you want to empower. Hey, Patrick, what do you think about this O line? He probably goes, what, what's his name? Watches like a second of, oh, like I, I, yeah, of course they should, because he's not going to be a dickhead about it. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I do think if he says, I want a wide out, you better get him one. Because I don't think that's bad business because so many games come down to making a drive at the end. Well, he should be saying it right now. Yes. Yes. (laughs) There are some people that say he already has. So we'll see what they end up doing. Last thing we want to get to here. Listen, I, I again listened to about four questions about Luis Reese Zamet. Do either of you know who that is? The yeah, rugby player that they just signed? I just want to make sure because I ran it by a couple of people like, I've never heard of the guy. I'm like, yeah. well, he's the rugby guy that she said, oh, the rugby guy. Like, we should just call him the rugby guy. They don't know his name. Yeah. Um, Like, seriously, is this? This vanity. Is it, you know, it's great from the international standpoint. Yeah. We're, we're growing the game. But what chance is there that, he, that you can go from playing that sport to playing this sport and make an impact? Uh, zero. I mean, when, when have we seen this? Like, I mean, well, the guy from Philadelphia, zero, but like a feet, yeah. like yeah, not zero. Mahomes. But I, I grew up in Minnesota. I watched Brock Lesnar try to play for the Vikings, like this thing, and I saw Brock Lesnar came to my high school. He's a he's a football looking guy. Sucked. The war. He was the worst football player I've ever seen. You need to have intuition to be able to play the game. Yeah. <laughs> I think this guy gets one look at Kadarius Tony and thinks I got a shot. <laughs> I, think, I, think I, can, I think I can make this work. <laughs> uh, you know, the hits are different. Yeah. Like they're, they're different. I mean, he's going to find that out. Yes, you have pads, they're very tough, but rugby is kind of a chest to chest tackle. Yeah. He's going to get a shoulder on the kneecap, he's going to get a helmet on a thigh, he's going to get a blindside blow up i mean it is a different kind of physicality yeah yeah it's uh who was the guy i was thinking of who was like the he played football in college he was like a skier or something like that Olympic oh yeah Cut, Jeremy Bloom. Bloom. i was just watching the yeah. movie about his sister the other day yeah yeah that's the Molly kind of guy did. i think that's what best case scenario could be that kind of a guy but that even that's a reach all right but he was nothing in the league right he like yeah. tried out returned a few kicks and like went yeah. home yep All right, that's going to do it for us here on the Red, Gold, and Bold. Again, uh, welcome our friends at Northland Injury Law, our newest sponsor. If you are in need of legal counsel, Kansas City's Google five-star rated personal injury lawyers can help you. They've been helping people for 40 years in Kansas City. Serious injuries from car accidents, work accidents, falls, and other serious personal injuries. I'll let them help you. Uh, They don't get paid unless you get paid. Uh, Take advantage of it. You can call right now at 816 400 Hurt, that's 816-400-H-U-R-T, or simply text the word Hurt, H-U-R-T, 
22 to 22. And of course, as always, thanks to our friends at GAN Asphalt and Concrete, uh, the best one contractor, all things parking lot. Find them online at GANASphalt.com. For Eric Eager from Super Sports, Jeff Chidea from the NFL Network, I'm Sir Petra saying thanks for joining us here on the Red Golden Bold.